That's yeah, so if you want this uh, this code right here, um, that's all on GitHub. And uh, github.com goes to 11. And then Golang training. And then we're, we're working through the 99 SVCC. Right, but all those folders are in here. So before that, we were working through these, which is fine. But uh, I just really like this that I put together for Silicon Valley Code Camp. So I thought we'd jump to that. And, and that's in where? Uh, GitHub.com goes to 11, go link training. Is the place. All right, so next we're going to look at uh, putting together our own. Um, whatever, using, using some of the pre-written code to help us out because this process right here is a little bit painful. And right here, right, we haven't done any routing yet in here. We're just handling everything that comes in. So um, if we were to do routing in here, uh, we have a handle connection which we wrote. That connection is coming in. And, uh, you know, we could, we, could, we could change on our method Right, we got access to the method. How else would we do routing in here if we were to build up our own just from this level without using pre-written code in the standard library? How would we do routing? Right, somebody comes to a different URL, we have to serve different code to them. How are we gonna how are we gonna know which URL they came to and direct it to different code? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much, right? Like we saw, we saw down here. Um, right, that we were able to get the method. Right. So you know, a request came in, and uh, we were able to you know see that. And is this the status line or the request line right here? Request. Yeah, the request line. Yeah. And so the request came in. We have the request line. We were able to get git. We could also get the URL, right? And so once we have the URL, we could say we could have conditional logic that says if it's this URL, run this chunk of code. If it's this URL, run that chunk of code. And so the word that Go uses to talk about that kind of routing, uh, and another word that's used in web programming, one word that's used in web programming is endpoints. So uh, different endpoints. This endpoint runs that code. This endpoint runs this code. That's my understanding of endpoint. That's still a phrase that's new to me. Is that your understanding of endpoint? That's your understanding too? Yeah. So you could say, hey, that endpoint is going to run this chunk of code. In Go, we also talk about this as a multiplexer. And so there's two words in Go which have the same letters, some, some of the same letters in them. So first is confusing to me. There's mutexes and multiplexers and muxes. Right? What? What's the difference between those? So a multiplexer and a mux, that's the same thing. A mux is just an abbreviation of a multiplexer. Okay, and so you can see here we have a serve mux, right? That's an abbreviation for multiplexer. And, uh, and there I'm just using a variable name mux, right? Just my own identifier made it up. And so um, a multiplexer is in engineering. If you look up what a multiplexer is, and I never study, studied, uh, I've never studied engineering, right? But in multi uh, multiplexer or MUX, and this is just electronics, is a device that selects one of several analog digital input signals and forwards a selected input into a single line. So you have different input signals and then it's being, you know, different ones are being selected. So it's something that does selection, right? And so uh, multiplexer is the same thing in Go. And, and you know, that, that, that concept, that idea of we have different things to choose. And you can see it in action. This is the best way to see it, right? If I come in at this URL, and have I covered this? I haven't covered this. We haven't looked at this stuff. No, this is all relatively, this, okay. You come, up, come in at this URL, we're going to run uptown. We're going to run that function, right? You come in at this URL, we're going to run you up. So you'll never guess what song is going through my head when I put this together, right? Yeah, you know, whatever, that one. And so that's multiplexing. That's switching which code is running based upon which endpoint comes in. Um, so, you know, uh, so let's just see this in action, then we'll, we'll kind of dig into understanding it a little bit more. Okay. Okay. 
and uh, we are in 24. Let me go to 24. And uh, go run main. And so now I'm listening on uh, port 9000. So localhost 9000. Doggy, doggy, doggy. Right? Because I came to this one. I ran that. It printed doggy, doggy, doggy. What happens if I go to cat? Catty, catty, catty. And what happens if I go here? Catty, catty, catty. Right? Because I said catch this and everything after it. With the in slash right there, it's a rooted directory, right? So this directory and anything else after it. I'm just going to I'm going to use this code. Anything that comes in here or any other URL that had that before it that, is going to run that code. But that line overrode the one before it. Yeah, this overrode that. Yeah. yeah. And this catches everything unless there's a more specific path. So if you look at like uh, how do you define, you know, what what is it that is the most specific? Uh, oh, I just knocked out my Screen, sorry, I just knocked my screen out. Hopefully, this recording's still good. Okay, Bob's question is Does the order of those two matter? Uh, and uh, I'm just going to stop this in case I blew the video, and we'll start the next video.